Good afternoon, everybody. And uh, welcome to today's uh, speech. Today's speech is about, it's called Now Discovering Strengths. But let's first talk about weaknesses. Anybody here has some of his areas of improvement on his New Year resolution? Something he wants to improve about himself? What do you have? Give me one example. <coughs> The part to improve. Yeah. Your exercises. Okay. To lose my belly. Okay. <laughs> and uh, another example. Yeah, I want to improve my uh, presentation skills. Okay. When did you first knew that you need to improve your presentation skills? Oh, uh, when I uh, had a big meeting yeah, in my work. Yeah, I felt like uh, I need to yeah, practice more and more. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. For me, when I was growing up, I was quite aware of the things that I need to be improving on. I had a lot of weaknesses. For example, I was shy. I would uh, get teased easily at class. <laughs> I would uh, take me a long time to understand the specific subject, especially math. I would ask too many questions to the teachers, and sometimes they would get really annoyed. And I, I knew that I had to work on a lot of things. It is also not only me. The culture of the school, the, make, the way our parents usually raise us. How many times did you bring your uh, scorecard to your parents and they said, Wow, you took 10 out of 10 in math. Tell me more about it. No, it would probably go to, why did you score 5 of 10 in English? You need to focus more on that. But what I'm coming to you here is with something new. Something that says that most of your time should be focused on your strengths. As a matter of fact, so today we're going to be talking about strengths versus weakness, which is more important. Do you know your strengths? And I'm going to go through the book I'm reviewing, which is called The String Finder. And my, I'm going to share with you my top five signature themes and how do I currently apply them at work and how I manage or you can manage your weaknesses. So 10 years ago, a guy by the name of Marcus Buckingham got fed up with the way we only focus on our weaknesses and said, it is now the time that you focus on your things. Because what does he say is that working on your weaknesses is important. If you are very shy, you should focus more on uh, presentation skills, for example, or finding a way to reach out to people. Because, and if you're very forgetful, you have to be very focusing on that. Because if you don't do that, you might fail. But working on your weaknesses will only prevent failure. But it will never guarantee greatness. The only way to guarantee greatness is to work on your strengths. Each one of us, when we get born, when we, when, when we are born, we don't only inherit from our parents the skin color, the look of our eyes, and how tall we are, we also inherit their strengths and weaknesses. I have a friend who never met his father. His mom and dad divorced a long time ago. And when he gets angry, his mother says, you are your father. <laughs> exactly like him. But also chances are he also inherited some of his strengths. But we usually take our things for granted. If you're really good at singing and in uh, Noriban, how many of you think about going and taking singing as a career? You say it's only one of my strengths. I have to focus on the things that I'm bad at. But the reality is that there is a formula which says if you have a talent and you spend a significant amount of time with it, you can develop it into strength. But if you are, have a weak talent and you spend the same time on it, it will develop, but not as if you spend the same time on your strength. So what does this book say? Is that if you read it and you do a sort of an online test, it said that you can narrow down your strengths into 34 uh, signature things. They have interviewed thousands and thousands of managers, successful managers, and they asked them what do you make you really uh, 
different network. They always found out that these managers discovered at some point, sometime in their life, their strings, and they work most on it. For example, uh, people who are uh, achievers, for example. Achiever is somebody who really works hard at work on a pre-existing plan, and he spends a lot of time on it. But he has that thing since he was growing up. So he focused more and more on that talent. Somebody who is uh, in, uh, like intellectual. He likes to sit alone and theorize and think about things to do. So these people only brought up the things that are weak in them to an acceptable level, and they focus on spending the time on things that they are really good at. These are the 34 signature themes. And they are quite a lot. What does this book do is that once you do the over online test, it will give you your top five. Each one of us has all of these, but in a different degrees. But you should know also what are your top five. So let me talk about me, for example. When I did this test, they told me that I have my top five things are input, uh, ideation, futuristic, restorative, and intellectual. What does it mean that, for example, ideation for me, I'm a kind of guy who keeps uh, coming up with new ideas all the time. And uh, I find sometimes myself getting filled up with many ideas, and I need to write them down on a piece of paper. Otherwise, uh, it will consume me. But also, I realize this is also a strength. So I dedicate some time in the day in writing them down and arranging them. Uh, ideation. I also connect different things I read, and I find a solution between them, and I find something common. And this way, uh, I can come up with new creative ideas. At, at school, it used to be a big problem for me, because I used to be sitting in class and thinking about all different things, and it would take me longer time to understand the subject, but now I realize it's a string as well. Futuristic, also I'm a kind of guy who thinks about the future and uh, the long-term vision. And restorative is I like to solve problems, and intellectual, that uh, I also keep thinking about things, how they are coming together, and uh, like just pure thinking. So I also apply them at, so now I discovered at work, some part of my work should be connected to these uh, things. For example, when I'm working at work, I have to do things every day differently. If I keep doing the things the same way I do them, I get bored. So I have to uh, recreate the things, I do them differently. Uh, some, <coughs> being an idea, uh, being an idea, ideation skill, it means that I like to work alone. But also I have to delegate work to others. So what I do now is that I, somebody is, uh, is doing the work for me. I do the work the way I want it to do in front of them one time. And then I pass it on to them and tell them this is the standard. Of course, they will going to be add their own way to it, but at least I know that they're going to be doing it on a specific level. Also, I'm going to talk about how to manage your weaknesses through your strengths. I'm going to speak about uh, two examples. One is Bill Gates. When he started this company, he knew he was very good in ideation and futuristic. He was very focused on that. But he had some weaknesses. He was not very good at putting these ideas into work. So what did he do? Instead of going and taking management classes and seeing how can I incorporate these ideas, he decided to team up with a guy called Paul Allen. Not many people know about this guy, but he's currently net worth of $20 billion. He's a guy who he brought him, he told him, these are my ideas, I know you're good at implementation, go ahead and do them. And he's a guy who practically built up Microsoft and Bill Gates was in the background. He was a guy generating ideas. So this is one way to manage your strengths, is to team up with people who are already strong in the things that you are weak at. This way you will both always need each other. This is the perfect partnership. Another way is to bring up your weaknesses to become as everybody else. For example, if you are in golf, you cannot bring a guy who is good and in, uh, in the sand pit and you can focus on the long distance. For example, Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods, he was, God gave him because he's have, uh, he's, uh, he has two ethnicities. He's uh, half, uh, I think, Filipino or Thai. He's half Thai and he's a half black. So he had the perfect body proportion for 
doing a very long uh, distance stroke. But he was very weak in padding in the long, short distance and in sandwich. So his coach told him that you have to focus on bringing up the skill to be as good as everybody else and keep, but focusing 80% of your time on the things that you're really good at so you can really exceed anybody else. So this is one way also to do it. And this is, and also sometimes use your own strengths to counter your weaknesses. For example, when I was a kid, I was shy. But now, how did I overcome that? I knew I'm good with ideations and ideas. So I, when I joined Toastmasters, I found I'm very good in writing speeches. And I used this skill to come up in front of people and get over my shyness. So now I overcome that. Mm -hmm. I was very bad in mem memorizing things. So I used my also intellectual, because I'm good in imagining, as we heard from one speaker, that imagining pictures and connecting them with ideas is a good way mm -hmm. to, to memorize things. So I used my own strengths to overcome my weaknesses. So this is uh, the book in a nutshell, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you. nice speech um, and let's have uh, one minute uh, time uh, for visa so you can use uh, this sleep